Okay, so we're going to work on um, kaleidoscope symmetry next. So basically, find and describe reflection and rotation symmetries in kaleidoscope designs, um, and then identify a basic design element that can be used to replicate a design. So basically, it's the first and the third one that we really want to focus on. Um, the other thing, number one, definitely we want to um, find a basic design element. We want to find the lines of symmetry, and we want to find the angles of rotation. Um, number four is something nice, but it's not necessarily something that we need to absolutely master. So this would be, these would be kind of our three top things that we're looking at. Okay, so if you've never played with a kaleidoscope before, it's this shape right here, and it's basically a long tube with some mirrors in it, and then some pieces of glass or beads or something colorful that you can see. And so when you hold it up to a light and you turn the tube, um, the beads shape, they shift, and they make different shapes in the kaleidoscope. Um, okay, so if you look at these designs here, and these are in your book also, um, five of these, des these designs are kaleidoscope designs because they're similar to what you would see if you were looking through a kaleidoscope. Um, so you can just kind of take a look at those and familiarize yourself with them. Um, so using what you know about reflection and rotation symmetry, um, analyze those six designs. So for A, locate all the lines of symmetry in the designs. Okay. So if we flip back here, we'll go back to the previous page. Okay. Um, the lines of symmetry have already kind of been drawn for you in some of them. So if we look at A, Use red. Um, if we were to, again, you're thinking about lines of symmetry, so you're thinking about where you can fold it, so that if you fold it one side onto the other side, um, the sides would match up equally. So for sure, this would be a line of symmetry. Um, you would have another line of symmetry right here. They've already kind of been drawn in for you right here. Now, if you look, you should have other lines of symmetry as well. So for example, from this point right here to this point right here would be another line of symmetry. Um, from here to here would be another line of symmetry. And then from here to here would be another line of symmetry. So this one altogether has one, two, three, four, five, six lines of symmetry. Um, if we look at this one here, the night and the moon and stars, again, they're kind of drawn in for you. So you have a line of symmetry here, a line of symmetry here, you have a line of symmetry here. Now, if we were to try and cut this one in half, this one would not be a line of symmetry because if you look even just at this triangle, this half of the triangle does not match this half of the triangle. So we couldn't hold the whole thing on its on this diagonal right here. So this one only has three lines of symmetry. Um, if we look at this one, okay, if we were to take and draw a line of symmetry here, um, you can see that the M-A-T-H is symmetric, but there's, if we were to fold this over, this triangle here would have to match up with the design on this triangle here. And because there's no division sign right here, this one is not going to be symmetric. And even if we tried to match this one up with this one, um, this would not be um, oriented the right way, and there's, no, there's just no way to make this symmetric. So this one actually has no lines of symmetry. Um, again, if we look down here, you can see that we've got line of symmetry here, line of symmetry here, line of symmetry here, and then just like this one up above, if we fold this one right here, right here, and right here, we also have lines of symmetry. So this one would have six, just like this one would have. And with this one, again, we're going to do line of symmetry here, line of symmetry here, line of symmetry here. And again, if we were to try and cut this one down the middle, this half of the triangle over here doesn't match this half. So these are the only lines of symmetry that we have. And then again, for this one, um, line of symmetry here, line of symmetry here, line of symmetry here. And then again, we could do each of the diagonals for this one. So we could do halfway through here, halfway through here, and halfway through here, okay? All right, so we've figured out A. Um, 
give the angles of rotation for the designs with rotation symmetry. So if you need to pause for a second or two to kind of look at the paper and figure out which ones have rotation symmetry, remember that in order to find your angle of rotation, you're taking 360 divided by the order of rotation or the number of rotations. Okay, so take a peek, take a second, I'm gonna reset this page um, and see if you can figure out where your rotation would be. Okay, so if we take a look at this first one, um, in order to rotate this one so that it would look the same as what it does originally, we could rotate from here to here. If this is, we locate this as our starting point. We can rotate this from here to here. We can rotate this one from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and then again from here to here. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six rotations in all. So 360 divided by six would give us 60 degrees. So each one of these rotations is rotating the circle 60 degrees each time. If we look at this one, in order to get this one to rotate appropriately, um, these two pieces right here, okay, so this moon would have to translate onto this moon over here. So in order to rotate this one, this is going to be one rotation here. This moon is going to have to travel to this moon. So this would be two rotations here, and then this moon is going to have to travel all the way back to this moon here. So that's three rotations. So 360 divided by three would be 120 degrees. Now we talked about this one not having any lines of symmetry, but it does have rotation symmetry. So if we think about moving the math from one math to the other math, that's one rotation. Take this math and move it to this math, that's two rotations. And then from here to this math, that's three rotations. So this one does have rotational symmetry, it just doesn't have any lines of reflection. It doesn't have reflection symmetry, so which is possible. <clears throat> so on this one, if we take this triangle here and move it to this triangle, there's one rotation, two rotations, three rotations, four rotations, five rotations, six rotations. So 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. And again, if you look, you can kind of see there's three yellow flowers in here. So if we were to rotate from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here, there's three rotations. So 360 divided by three is 120. So each rotation is 120 degrees. And lastly, we have this one here, and there's just one design element per square or per triangle. So there's one rotation to three, four, five, six rotations. So 360 degrees divided by six again is 60 degrees per rotation. So we figured out all of our angles of rotation for each one of these. So make a table showing the number of lines of symmetry and the angle of rotation for each design. Um, so let's see if we can pop back a page again. Maybe we can reset our page again. Okay, so I went back in and I put in the lines of symmetry for each one of these again. Remember, number three didn't have one. So we'll just call these A, B, C, D. Oh, wait, they're already labeled. Look at that. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. So what I did is I set up a table somewhere in here, okay? So figure A, so if we go back to figure A, we decided that it had six lines of symmetry. So one, two, three, four, five, six lines of symmetry. So it has six lines of symmetry, and then the angle of rotation that it had was 60 degrees, okay? So 60 degrees. Figure B had three lines of symmetry, one, two, three, and its angle of rotation was 120 degrees. So it had three lines of symmetry and the angle of rotation was 120 degrees. Now if you remember, C is the one that didn't have any lines of symmetry. 
but its angle of rotation, I believe, was 120 degrees also. Yep. So 120 degrees. Okay. Um, D was another one that had six lines of symmetry. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six lines of symmetry. And it had a 60 degree angle of rotation. Okay. Um, on this one, letter E, it had three lines of symmetry and its angle of rotation was 120 degrees. Keep going the wrong way, sorry. It had three lines of symmetry and its rotation was 120 degrees. And last one, we had six lines of symmetry and an, an angle rotation of 60 degrees. So six and 60 degrees. Okay, so the next question is asking us what relationship do we see between the number of lines of symmetry and the angle of rotation. So even if we come back here, right, the number of lines of symmetry that we had here was six, and if we divide by six, we get the angle of rotation. We have three lines of symmetry, so if we divide by the number of lines of symmetry, 120 degrees. Um, this being the only exception right here, is that this one is the only one where no lines of symmetry, even though it doesn't have any lines of symmetry, it still has rotational symmetry, and the number of rotations is, gives us 120 degrees per. We had six lines of symmetry here. We took 360 divided by six, it got 60 degrees. We had three lines of symmetry here. 360 divided by three is 120, and six lines of symmetry here, so 360 divided by six is 60. So the relationship between the number of lines of symmetry and the angle of rotation is, if we take the number of lines of symmetry, and multiply it by the angle of rotation, it's equal to 360 degrees each time. Um, and then if we look at this um, down here, so it says analyze the kaleidoscope design below to see whether it confirms your relationship. So if we take the number of lines of symmetry and figure out the rotation angle, then multiply those two together, it should give us 360 degrees. So if we look for the lines of symmetry, we have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. And I believe those are the only lines of symmetry because if you look at this half of the triangle here, it doesn't match up with this half of the triangle here. So the lines of symmetry are three. And now let's look at how many times we can rotate this one. So if you look, we can go from this part right here. So if we look at this right here, there are three of those. So we would rotate this one to this one, and rotate this one to this one, and rotate this one to this one. So 360 divided by three is equal to 120 degrees. So now if we, wrote, if we multiply three times 120, that gives us 360 degrees. So that confirms the relationship. Um, the next question, oh, there's our table that I didn't think we had. Um, each of the designs can be made by repeating a small piece of the design. So we call this piece the basic design element. So for each design, sketch or outline the basic design element. So if we come back to our um, chart back here that we have, and I'm going to reset this page so that we don't have so many lines going through it. Okay. So the basic design element is basically the shape that's repeated over and over and over again. So if we look, um, if we look, the basic design element in this one is going to be this piece right here. Okay. This is the piece if we rotate it every time, it's the piece that's repeated every single time. Um, the number of design elements is equal to the number of rotations that you have. So, for example, on this one we had six rotations, so there should be six basic design elements. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if we look at this one, remember we have three rotations. So our basic design element, there should be three of them in the figure that we have. So this is the basic design element. If you look, we have a moon facing this direction and we have a moon facing this direction. And in order for it to be the basic design element, it needs to be rotated all the way around. So we have the moon facing each other here and the moon's facing each other here. Um, again, with this one, so our basic design element in this one is going to be 
the part that says math time with the division symbol. And then down here, our basic design element is just going to be one triangle of the hexagon. And again, this one is going to be similar to these two up here, um, because if you notice, um, this piece right here would be our basic design element that includes the whole flower here. Um, you could potentially use this as your basic design element also. Um, along with this up here, you could use this as your basic design element. And you could use this as your basic design element. Um, and then in this one right here, here's your basic design element right here. So I think we have all of those outlined. One of the designs is not a kaleidoscope kaleidoscope design, that is, it is not similar to a design you would see if you look through a kaleidoscope, which, des which design do you think it is and why? So if you were to look at these designs, which one do you think would not be a kaleidoscope image? Well, the answer would be C, because this one doesn't have any lines of symmetry. So in order for it to be a kaleidoscope design, it needs to have reflection and rotation symmetry. And because this one doesn't have any lines of symmetry, this one can't be the kaleidoscope design. Okay, so summarize. These are the ACE questions that go along with it. They're also, I attached this as a PDF file to the website. Um, so this should be um, on the website as well. Also, it's on um, page 20 to 25 and 31 to 32 um, on page 18. I also have a couple of other pieces that will help you out with this, and they're also attached on the website. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I will keep working on getting the rest of these. I think I have two other flip charts to post after this one. Um, there's a CFA that we have on Wednesday, March 8th. So as soon as you get through with this one, or sorry, as soon as you get through with 3.1, you should be ready for the CFA. So I may not post again um, until after spring break. I'm going to try and get up to 3-1 posted, um, maybe by tomorrow, maybe by Thursday, and then we should have spring break off. If you have questions, let me know. Hope everything's going well, and we will talk to you later.